I own a Lenovo R60. This is my retro laptop, which I use for retro gaming for playing games from my youth. Now the R60 has been a pet project since then. And the one thing I'm going to do here in this video is replace the CPU. Now, most people who have an R60 will replace the CPU with something like the T2700 dual core CPU. Now, as you can see here, my R60 has an Intel Celeron M CPU 410 with 1.46 gigahertz. Just unscrew those screws and everything is easy accessible. I'm just going to fast forward some pieces for you guys because some things are just too boring to see, just me unscrewing stuff. Now I've never been as this far as opening the machine. I only replaced the memory banks so far and this is new ground for me. So I'm looking here, <laughs> which screws unscrew this piece of plastic. There are three tiny screws hidden behind the battery which hold this plastic lid together. And here's a tip. I have some experience in tearing down machines and putting them back together. But before I start tearing down a machine, I take photos before I tear it down. Just unscrew those four screws and you can pull the whole component out of its socket, which reveals the current CPU. Now as you can see, there isn't much cooling paste left after 25 years or so. So here I have a brand new T2700 CPU, which will replace the old one. Just plug in a new CPU, which will fit correctly. Now, I'm lazy, so I have some cooling paste right here, a uh, thermal compound from a tube. Now, many people have their own ways of adding thermal compound to a CPU. Now, this thermal compound came with a spoon-like thing, which I'm not going to use. In my opinion, if you just add the thermal compound on the CPU with dots and just put back the copper thermal component onto the CPU, it will just spread out eventually. So just to speed up the process, I'm going to fast forward everything you're going to see right here is just putting the R60 back together. And then the tragedy starts. I ran into a problem. Everything went just fine. It's just a, a replacing operation, but the laptop would just start and give me a black screen. So I replaced the CPU again with the original CPU and it ran just fine. So I went digging in some old Lenovo forums and this problem isn't really documented that well. So the first thing I did was I went searching for a new BIOS update for the R60, which I found, but the BIOS update can only be burned onto a CD recordable. And you guessed it, I had no CD recordables at home because who does these days? So I found somewhere a old DVD recordable uh, with some old stuff on it, it was heavily damaged. Luckily, I own a desktop with an optical disc tray. So I tried many times to erase the DVD. It did not work. The DVD-R was so heavily damaged that it took a sweet time of 29 minutes just to pump over one gigs from the DVD-R to my hard drive. And I ordered just a five pack of CD-R spindles from Amazon. So after a few days, I got the CDRs and I was back in business. So I was gladly burning the update onto the CDR and the CDR was booting up perfectly. It gave me a menu screen that I've never seen. And then this shit happens, error screen for no reason. So again, I went searching on the Lenovo websites, digging into all forums and I got the correct answer this time. Because all my boy, you have been you bought a Lenovo R60e instead of the original R60. The R60 only takes a T2700 CPU and your R60e takes only a T1350 single core CPU. Not that special double core CPU that everyone wants. So I have some luck at my side. The T1350 single core CPU is very cheap. I found one on the internet for $8, but it's from China. So it took its sweet time of three weeks to arrive. So here we are again, replacing the CPU. This is the old CPU with its old cooling paste. And there you have the new T1350 single core CPU, which I will finally install into the R60e. Now this is the same replacing job as the first one, so I'm just going to speed it up again. And there you have it, no black screen at all. So as you can see, it recognizes the 
genuine Intel CPU T1350 with 1.86 GHz instead of the 1.43 GHz. It is a minor upgrade, but damn it, it is an upgrade. So what is the significant upgrade in CPU power? Well, I have no f***ing clue. I am running the game Freelancer here. Uh, it's a 3D oriented game. But what I'm seeing here is a slight upgrade in its 3D rendering. So there you have it kids, the easiest upgrade ever if you have the correct hardware and the correct components. Always check your facts on the internet. And thank you for watching and see you at the next upgrade for my R60E, specifically the E.